Hi guys, if you watch this channel for a while, you probably know I don't really make videos about brand new Blender features that are still in development. There's other channels like Ask NK that you can follow if you want all the breaking news. They do a much better job of that than I probably ever would, so I figure why bother. However, every so often there's a new feature that gets announced and I get really excited about it and I, I have to make a video about it. And this is one of those occasions. There's a new feature that's coming to Blender and it's something that I've been waiting for for a couple of years now and I know other people have been really impatiently waiting for this as well because it's going to be a game changer. It's called path guiding and it's a new set of algorithms that make path tracing engines like cycles much, much faster and they create less noise. So in order to talk about how that's going to work, uh, I need to quickly cover just how path tracing engines work in general. I'm not really going to go into detail about this. I made a video a few weeks ago about optimizing Blender and how to get render times down. If you want to know more about that, check out that video. I'll link it in the description. But basically the idea is when you want to render something with a path tracer, you take the camera view, you split it up into a grid and each one of those points on the grid is a pixel. Then you fire light rays into that point and they bounce around the scene in random directions. Once you hit a light source, you figure out, okay, well, this light source hits this many things, then it hits the camera. We know how bright that light point should be. And then you do the same thing with multiple samples for every single pixel. Now, the problem is that every light path is firing off in a different direction. They're all taking different paths and they're hitting different light sources. So that's why you get noise because each one of those pixels, all the light samples that you've took for that individual pixel, is went a different direction to its neighbor. Now, if you use enough samples, that's not really a problem normally, but you do sometimes get scenarios where Cycles really struggles to find the light source. Because it's all just bouncing around in random directions, if you have, say, a dark room with a really small window or like a door that's just barely open and there's a bright light outside, most of the light bounces for most of the pixels are not gonna just randomly bounce their way out of this little crack and find their way outside. But every so often one will. And Blender goes, whoa, this, this pixel is like crazy bright. It's got this, it's found its way out to this really bright light, but none of its neighbors are. And that's when you get fireflies. That's when you get the little white dots in the render where it's like, it almost looks like dead pixels. And that's because none of the neighbors around that bright light managed to find their way out. They just couldn't find the light source because it's all bouncing randomly. So a couple of years ago, these technical papers started getting published. Uh, I found one online by, I think he's called Thomas Muller. He's a NVIDIA researcher who does really good uh, technical papers. I'll link to his website somewhere. But I was reading this, this technical paper and it's all about path traces. And then Weta started introducing it into their systems. I think Pixar uses it now and Disney Animation Studios use it now. So it's sort of becoming the standard. And how it works, is rather than just letting all the light bounces go off in random directions, you kind of build a map, a 3D map for the render engine, which tells it which direction the light sources are coming from. So for instance, on the, uh, the example I used earlier on, if you have a dark room with a small gap where light coming through, if one of those samples hits that specific point and Blender goes, whoa, this is crazy bright, if you use path guiding, then it'll go, okay, well, let's send some more samples over that direction as well and see if any of the other pixels around it are also bright. There's probably a light source over there. There's no other reason why you would get one really bright light unless it's, you know, a weird reflection thing or something. So you know, I've been waiting really patiently for that to actually come to Blender. And it's one of those things you see, you know, like a, a two minute paper video or something, and it's like, oh, this looks cool, but it never, it never materialized. You never get it in Blender. But then Intel announced that they were working on their own set of libraries, their own path guiding libraries called the Open Path Guiding Libraries or something like that. And it's open source, which means it can be brought into Blender. Then around this time last year, they announced Cycles X and they said, oh, by the way, we could probably bring path guiding into this. So I've been waiting around for like a year and now we're finally getting it. In fact, technically it's already in Blender. If you download the beta build of Blender 3.4, it's actually in there already. Although I wouldn't suggest you do necessarily right now because it's in a very, very early state. And frankly, it doesn't really work at the moment. Uh, but it has been implemented and it is getting more features all the time. And once it's fully implemented, it's going to be awesome. Like, like I said, it's very early at the moment. So right now, 
It can do volumes, which I'm very excited about. We'll get much faster volume rendering. And it can do diffuse surfaces, but it can't do uh, translucency. It can't do specular. So if you have anything that's shiny, it couldn't figure it out using this method at the moment. It's also CPU only at the moment, but it will have GPU support eventually. So it's not something that you can go and use right now necessarily, but it's something that in the future, in a lot of scenarios, will make your rendering much, much faster. It's something I'm, I'm like totally psyched about. If you remember how much of an upgrade Cycles X was or adaptive sampling, when all of a sudden it was cutting like, like 10, 20, 30% off render times, it's going to be like that again. If you look at all the technical papers for the sort of time savings, it's really huge. I remember reading a, a technical paper that once said, in some scenarios, as many as 50% of all the samples are just discarded because they never find a light source. That shouldn't really happen anymore, certainly not on that sort of scale. So if you can imagine being able to render stuff with like a fraction of the samples you currently have to use and get the same quality, it's going to be huge. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about this. It's just something I'm really excited about. And even though it's it's very early days, I want the people to know that things are progressing. This is coming and it's it's going to be huge. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in a day or two with another video. Yeah. Ah, it's been there for like two hours. That's freezing cold tea. I hate cold tea.